Welcome to this NPTEL course on game theory. Game theory is a mathematical discipline which models the conflicting behavior. The subject originated during the world war and the, the poly mathematician von Neumann is considered to be the founder of this subject. The subject has some earlier results by M. L. Borel and other people, but the von Neumann is considered as the main person who created this branch of subject. Their von Neumann's book with economist Morgan Stern, the Games and Economic Behavior is the first book on this subject which laid the foundations. So, in this subject there are two or multiple people who make their decisions simultaneously and accord, accordingly the each player gets a benefit or payoff function payoff. Now the objective is to decide how to choose their decision depending on others choices as well. Of course, the major problem here is that when a player is making his decision, he does not know what the other players are making. So, these games are known as economic games, classical games and etc. There is another class of games known as combinatorial games. The combinatorial games are the games that we have played as a kid. The examples are tic tac toe, chess and other games like that. These games are this the theory of community such games is developed mainly by John Conway, Richard Guy and Erwin Burlkamp. In fact, they have written a very famous book called Winning Ways, right now it has 4 volumes. As mentioned in the introductory video of this course, this course is divided into 4 parts. The first part is about combinatorial games. In second and third we will look at non-cooperative games, zero sum and non-zero sum game and in the final part we look at the cooperative games. Now we will concentrate on combinatorial games. We will walk through some examples, through these examples we will introduce some of the terminology. We start with tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe is a game played by two players on a 3 by 3 grid. Players make alternate moves. So, started with starts with first players then the player who makes or marks a row or column or diagonal is, is the winner. So, let us see what it means. Suppose let us say the player 1 let us say places a mark here. Then player 2 let us say he chooses a mark here. Then player 1 again makes his move, let us say he makes his move here, then player 2 if he does not place a mark here, player 1 is going to make a 3 in this along this diagonal therefore, player 1 will so he will try to place his marker here. Then player 1 
will be forced to play here, then player 2 will play here. In the next player 1 whatever wherever he places, so let us say he places here, then player 2 will be forced again here and then player 1 finally left with this mark. Now in this instance no player could make 3 marks in a row. So therefore this game has ended in a draw, but let us look at another instance. Let us say player 1 has started making mark here, then let us say player 2 has make mark here, then player 1 let us say has put here, then let us say player 2 has put here. Now of course obviously player 1 is forced to play here and in the next player 2 let us say he makes a mark here but then player 1 puts here and he wins. So in this setup player 1 wins. So this is a tic tac toe game. Of course in this game we also have an option of draw but in most common combinatorial games we always assume that the game ends either in a win or a loss. But the tic tac toe since this is a well known to us we have start used this to illustrate the ideas of combinatorial games even though in a classical sense tic tac toe is not a combinatorial game. But the arguments that we develop in combinatorial games are used to analyze such games. Okay, now we will see another game. So this is called a dominating game. Okay. The dominating game consists of a square cell where the players again make moves alternatively. Player 1 chooses two consecutive cells horizontally say player 2 chooses two cells of course consecutively and vertically. So in a sense player 1 is going to choose two cells like this and player 2 will choose something like this. Now when they do like this they alternatively start choosing it whoever makes their last move he is going to be the winner. So let us say already the, the player 1 has chosen this and player 2 has chosen this. Now let us say the player 1 has chosen this 2 consecutive cells then let us assume player 2 now has chosen this player 1 now can choose this then player 2 let us choose this then player 1 player one is let us say he goes to choose this then player 2 let us say 
he chooses this. Then player 1 now goes back to this, he chooses this. Then player 2, player 2 has these are all free for him. So, let us say he chooses this, then player 1 is choose going to choose this, then again player 2 can choose let us say this. Now, player 1 has one choice here that is it. So, therefore, he has only one choice here, he will choose this. Then player 2 can choose this, now player 1 has no move here. So, therefore, player 2 is the winner, player 2 is winner in this setup. So, this is a domineering game. Note that in this instance of domineering game, player 1 has no for no more moves to make. Of course, play uh, and the player 2 is the person to make the last move and hence player 2 is the winner. So, in typically in this combinatorial games, the last person to make the move is the winner. There is another version where the last person to make a move is going to be the loser which are known as misere games. But the common version is the normal play where the last person to make the move is winner. So, let us explain another game which is known as a chomp. So, this has again a kind of a rectangular cell. And each cell is considered as a chocolate here and this cell consists of poison. All the cells are considered as a poison. So, now whenever a player as is usual the players make moves they alternatively. If a player makes let us say a move here, let us say player 1 has decided to take here, then he not only takes this particular cell, he also takes the all the cells above and right to it. So, that means this all these cells he will choose. Next player 2 will choose another cell, let us say player 2 has chosen this. Then he will choose all the things above and right to this. Then next player 1 let us say he chooses this, then he will choose all this. Then player 2, let us he will choose this. So, here in this setup, player 2 is winner. So, this chomp is another game where the in this instance player 2 is winner. So, now we will look at another game. This game is known as hex there are two players here, one is a blue player and another is let us say red player letter. Okay. So, the goal of this game is to make a path from one side to the another side. So, the blue player wishes to mark these hexagonal cells such that he makes a path from this side to this side and the red player would like to make a mark from this side to this side and they will be alternate only making their moves. So, in each move the players will pick one of this hexagon cell and mark them with their respective color. So, let us play this game. So, let us say blue player starts here, let us say he makes it 
blue. Then the red player comes. So let us say red player marks here. Next blue player again. Then the red player next blue player let us say he will put this here and the red player now chooses let us say here next blue player will come and he will mark here and the next red player will do here and then the blue player comes here and now we have a path from the blue path from here, 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 this. So in this instance the blue player won this game. Okay. Next we will see one more game which is known as a takeaway game. So in this takeaway game there are some set of coins right now we will put it as a sticks here. So let us say let us say 10 sticks. Again two players alternate will make the moves and then the in each move players can pick one or two or three sticks. Again last player to pick is winner. So the, there are certain number of sticks. So in this picture we have 10 sticks and the players are uh, making their moves alternatively and each player can pick either one stick or two sticks or three sticks. Now the last player to pick is a winner, is the winner here. So now let us look at this one. Let us say the first player, let us say he picks three first player. Now let us say second player in his setup, let us say he pick 2. Then the first player will pick only 1, then the second player whatever he picks here and then the last player will pick the last stick here. So this is a game where in this instant the blue player has won. Now the whole idea of this combinatorial games is to understand such games and see whether a player has a winning strategy or not, in particular who has a winning strategy. For example, in this game can we say decisively say that the player 1 always has a winning strategy or is it true that the player 2 can enforce the win? So in the following sessions we will discuss about some of these games and understand their uh, winning strategies. But before uh, concluding this session we would like to point out one very interesting application of this combinatorial games. So we have seen in the previous game this hex game. Using this hex game we can actually prove what is known as a Brouwer fixed point theorem. So I will state what Brouwer fixed point theorem is and then we will come back to this later. So let us take a function f from let us say interval 0 1 to interval 0 1 we assume that this is a continuous function. We 
then a point x in 0 1 is called a fixed point of f if f f is equals to x. Now the question is does there exist a fixed point? This is a question where Brower has proved that let us say K B convex and compact set. of R n. Then every continuous function f from k into k has a fixed point. So, this is a very very deep theorem and uh, in this course, we will see how this hex game can be used to prove this fixed point theorem. But before concluding this session, let me just give you a hint about proving one dimensional case. So, f is from 0 1 to 0 1, consider g of x to be f x minus x. Now, note that g of 0 is greater than equals to 0, g of 1 is negative. Therefore, there exists x in 0 1 such that g of x is equals to 0 which implies f x is equals to x. Of course, small issues one, one needs to check. Here, uh, the main thing is that how am I guaranteeing this existence of 0? This I will leave it to you as an exercise. So, this is the kind of mathematics that we require to follow this course and we will assume that level of mathematics. Barring certain results, in this course we will prove almost all and all results and we will not leave any theorem unproved. Okay. With this I will conclude this session, we will meet again in the next session.